Hey, hey, everybody. It's Susan from Susan Makes Jewelry and more. How's everybody doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you to all my new subscribers. Bless your hearts. My channel has more than doubled in the last few months, and I am so grateful. Don't look at my fingernails. They're nothing. I never paint my nails, and now you know why, because I can't keep them up. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm here to, as promised, to do a new video on um, my polymer clay, the liquid clay video that I made several months ago um, that the music was just too loud, and that's my fault. Um, so... Um, now that my daughter is doing all of the editing and whatnot, we got it going. So, uh, it's not going to be exactly like the original. Um, I'm going to add a few extra little ditties to it, but for the most part, it will be very similar. Um, I kind of had to remember because it was so long ago that I did it, but I love trying to find new things that I can do with liquid clay, um, just tons of different things you can do with it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the liquid polymer clay, um, I love using liquid Sculpey, and I started using liquid Kato. Um, it's not easy to find the colors in Kato clay, um, but it is, most of them are translucent, and I really like them and they're very vivid and very beautiful. Um, now Sculpey has a much larger range of colors and um, whether they're opaque or translucent, they have quite a few translucents. Now, as you can see, I'm putting out all these little bezel trays and that's what they're called, bezels. And what goes in them usually are cabochons, you know, the little glass insert. Some people put pictures in there and then put the cabochon on top. Um, we're not going to do cabochons. We are going to actually do the art in the tray and then I will dome them later in resin. See we have color, different colors. Um, the colored ones are not real common. Um, here's my tray. This is just my tray that I keep around but I do have a box full of other clays. So one side is Sculpey and the other side is Kato. And then I have little tools in that. And um, so anyway, I'm also gonna be using, in part of this, I'm gonna be using the seashells. And um, yeah, I have lots of them. Uh, a nail dotting tool is very nice uh, to do like the gems. You can pick up stuff very easily. You'd be amazed how many nail products can be used in our our art field too and that's another video coming too i think i might do a series anyway so what you do is if you want it to be translucent you want it to be metallic looking you want it to be just um, a background color it's entirely up to you i'm using peacock pearl it is a uh, more of a metallic looking uh, blue, it's gorgeous. Um, and remember, when these are baked, yes, they're baked, not fried. <laughs> when they're baked, the colors are always gonna be just a little different. So anyway, what I'm doing with these seashells is very similar to being uh, doing a mosaic. Um, if you wanna just put a few of them in, and put other things um, in your tray, go for it. This is art. Art is what you make of it. Art is what you feel looks beautiful, okay? Um, these are just suggestions and ideas, and I guess I put too much in that tray. You have to make allotments for what you're gonna put in there to see if it's gonna you know, change the volume of your clay. So, but I like to make sure it's relatively almost full because these seashells are quite thin. And sometimes I like to break them up and just do in little pieces and stuff. So, but I mean, you can put gems, you can put rhinestones, you can put 
pearls. Like you can get that, like those um, half cut pearls, like the flat backs. I use a lot of flat back rhinestones in my work. Um, but I love using these different colored um, seashells. Um, I, I really love uh, abalone shells. They're just magnificent. Mother of pearl. Um, I love bling and transparency. You can also um, add different things to your clay. If you don't quite like the color, add some alcohol ink. Add some um, dye of some sort, you know, like, um, what is it called? I've, I've never tried it, but maybe you could even use the resin colorants. I don't know. Uh, you can use mica powders. There's so many different things. Glitter. You know me, I love my glitter. I love my bling bling. But see, I've got all these gorgeous little guys in here. And once I'm, well, I had to put a couple more little pieces in. Because see, it's entirely up to you how many pieces you want. If you want it to have more open space, go for it. You know? Um, it's entirely up to you. The world's your oyster. That's the one thing I love about art. There is no wrong way to do it, you know? The process is certainly, there are things you can do wrong, but the actual um, making of the product. But I absolutely love doing these. I've tried it with resin um, and I, I think I like it more with the polymer clay, the liquid clay. So, each one of these, you, you really need to read the label as to what you can bake them at because I don't know why, but the, poly, the liquid clay sometimes bakes at a higher uh, temperature than the uh, regular polymer clay. So make sure you read uh, what it says on the bottle. And I like to put a tent over mine. Oh, here I'm going to add some beautiful holographic glitter to this clay. This is a translucent clay. So I got to get my little goodies together here. And just kind of eyeball it. So here we go. Going to put some of my, I love this this glitter. It's microfine. It's a tiny, tiny bit. You don't need much. I'm not using that much clay anyway because it's a small bezel. Anywho, we're going to put it in the tray here. Put it all out nice. And see the way it looks right now, it, it, it just looks like paste with glitter in it. But it's a translucent clay, so, uh, or transparent clay, and um, all you're basically going to see is the glitter in the background. So, here we go with the, why am I putting them away? Tap, 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 get all the air bubbles out. Oh, we're going to use these gorgeous blue ones. Oh, there's, look at the beautiful lines and everything. Oh, I love them. I like to put a little tiny tad of the clay on the bottom of my little tool. It just helps me pick up what I want and it'll stay there without falling off. <laughs> but, oh, aren't these just gorgeous shells? I love them, I love them. Okay, Susan, get the camera in the right spot so we can see. Share with the class, please. Come on, Susan, share with the class. See, it's got like green in it and blue and kind of a teal. If we could please see the tray, Susan, that would be just divine. There we go. See, it's pretty now. So that one's about ready to go. Make sure you have all the sides clean and stuff. It'll be a lot easier than uh, the back end. <laughs> so.
So, what's next? Oh, next process. This is what I had in the first video that got messed up. But you can take liquid polymer clay and just, this is the Kato clay. And like I said, most of the liquid Kato clay is translucent. So you can mix the colors, you can, um, I even mix it with Sculpey clay. And I think I'm gonna do that with the first one here. But they just have, I think like five or six colors in the Kato that I've been able to find, but I just absolutely love it. I wish that uh, she would come out with more. You hear Donna Kato? So I have the blue and then I'm adding pearl to it from Sculpey. And I'm just spreading it out on this um, baking tray from my toaster oven. And then I'm taking a this little plastic palette knife and just mixing it together, kind of making a marble effect and I love how it turns out. Oh, don't waste any bit. Let it drip down. There we go. And so basically, that's all I'm going to do. And make sure it's a relatively thin layer. You don't want it real thick because otherwise the process won't work well. And I believe I have, this is uh, bronze or copper. I can't remember which one it was, um, but it's a metallic. You can see the beautiful mica in it. And then we're going to put this translucent amber in it and just swirl it through. Oh yeah. Tap, 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 tap. I got these little plastic palette knives at the Dollar Tree. You get like four of them, like three or four different size palette knives. They work wonderful. So then I'm going to take my favorite color, purple. And we're going to put the pearl on there again. It's so pretty. Try to be very careful if you're going to use a toothpick. I like these toothpicks that only have the sharp side on one end and it has um, a blunt at the other end and that's the part I use as the blunt. So then we stick them in the oven and bake them for about 15 minutes. These are ones that I have made before. Uh, some of them turned out real thick so they're difficult to work with. Um, you can use um, the little metallic cookie cutters um, I tried using, um, like those scrapbooking, um, punches and the little, the miniature ones just don't work well, but these are all the different ones. See, I, I added, um, oh, what's it called? The little, uh, opal flakes to it, but see how many things you can do to these things, but you need to make them thinner so that they're not so, um, hard to cut through. Now, the ones I have already pre-done, I've used um, the little cutters, little um, metal cutters that we use um, on polymer clay. And I've also used um, a hole punch, the little handheld hole punch. I had um, a star one when, <laughs> when I was selling Scentsy. And then I found one that has a heart no, no, I lied. I had the heart one. Yeah, there's the heart one. And then I found a star one, and then I have one that just does holes. So um, these are all the ones that I made with those. And so basically what you do is, it, again, it's a mosaic. But you start it out with the liquid clay. It's baked and you can excuse me you can put it in with pretty much anything because it's already baked clay so if you want to put it in a resin piece or if you want to use it for um like glitter of some sort you know it, it's it's entirely up to you um but i like to use these for um my mosaics my little trays 
and I have a lot of different colors that I've already made in advance. Uh, these ones have large cut uh, whole uh, pieces that I've cut. I've tried, you can even take a pair of scissors and just cut them in random shapes. If you want to do like geometric shapes or what have you, you can do it that way too. Because once it's been cut, I mean baked, they're easy to cut. Here is some liquid translucent turquoise. And I absolutely love what it looks like after it's baked. It does not look like turquoise to me. That looks like powder blue. <laughs> but when it, when it bakes, it bakes such a beautiful translucent, very light colored blue. It's gorgeous. I don't know why they called it turquoise, but they did. So what I'm going to do is empty out the thing again after I just put everything back. <laughs> And it is going to go in this tray in different in a different order. You can do anything you want, like I keep saying. I know I sound like a broken record, don't I? But it is so much fun to just, you know, get creative and find new ways to do something. You know, instead of using um, seashells, we're using baked liquid clay on liquid clay. Got it? You could even make stuff out of regular polymer clay and put it in your liquid clay creation. The world's your oyster, you know? You can do whatever you want. Um, this one would look really cool if I were to put some flat back uh, rhinestones or something. Um, give it a little extra bling. But I mean, there's so many things you can do with these. I've done a lot of uh, necklaces, you know, the little pendants, and I've got a bunch of rings that I've made. And if you're interested in any of these pieces that I've made, uh, they will be going in my shop on Facebook. And if you haven't already uh, gone on Facebook, it's Susan Makes Jewelry and or you can just go under Susan McCarter and I think it'll put you on that page too. But um, yeah, I'd love to see you on uh, my page. I'd also love to see you on my Instagram, Susan Makes Jewelry. Um, and if you really like this video, I would really consider it a favor if you would tell your friends about it, share it with everybody. Um, I'd love to uh, get my subscriber count up there because I'm really trying hard to build my channel. And anything that I could get help-wise would be amazing. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like. And if you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the notification bell that'll let you know whenever I post a new video. I'm trying to get videos out much more frequently than I am, but my wonderful editor is back in school, so I have to work around her schedule. <laughs> but um, all of these wonderful, see, look, I made them with, I made all of these with the uh, primary colors. Um, Sculpey comes out with kits that, like, they have one, just the basics, white, black, and transparent, I can't remember what the other one is. Then they have one with the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. And then they have metallics, like rose gold, silver, and gold. Um, but they have so many more. Um, I get most of my, of my liquid clay from, um, well, a couple of different places. Um, blueberry beads, it's blueberrybeads.com. They have all kinds of wonderful things there. Um, so yeah, if you, I'll be putting all of those different links, um, in the description box of the different places that I've gotten these lovelies. Um, the bezels, um, most of these are through Amazon or AliExpress. Um, you just type in 
metal bezels. Um, there's so many different things to choose from. Um, I think this is like the last one I'm creating. I think, I think, I think. Then you just throw them in the oven and bake them. Um, I usually cook mine at 275 for about 20, no, 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes in the bezels. Um, when I'm just doing it on the trays, I do it for about 15 to 20 minutes because it's a much thinner um, process. You know, it's not thick clay like you're doing here. You have more volume. That's the word, Susan, volume. Oh, Susan, we have to put some glitter. So we're just going to sprinkle a little fairy dust all over. Make it just special. See, you can do whatever you want. But like I said, when it when it um, comes out of the oven and it cools, oh wow, it's amazing. Wait for it to cool, otherwise you'll be disappointed. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, I have a big bag there of all the different clay that I've cooked up on sheets. See, there's the rings that I've made. Aren't they pretty? And these are rings that are, um, they're sizable, but they're nice metal, so they're not going to like break and stuff. Aren't they gorgeous? But you can see how the clay in the background is kind of like just a little hint because the seashells are the star. Now see, I love this one. This one's amazing. The clay and the seashells just meld together. They just look so pretty together. Oh, that's the one that I showed you earlier that I made. That one's pretty too. I love those shells. And that's one we did earlier. Are they not the most amazing things? So, I hope you like all these lovelies. Like I said, I'm going to be putting them in my shop on Facebook. I used to have an Etsy store, but it just, it just wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> what can I say? What else do I have for you? Yes, on these, a lot of times, like, see how deep the bezel is? Um, sometimes you want, might want to put a thicker butt of the clay. But a lot of times what I do is I'll put some rhinestones around the side, maybe. Um, but um, I like to put resin on top just to make sure that everything's there. And um, that I don't have to worry about the stuff falling out. You know, like possibly one of the shells falling out or something. So if you set it in resin, you have a nice shine. Um, oh, yeah, there's more rings. Yeah, you just take these little, these little guys and yeah. You take a sponge and you slice them. And you can just throw your, your uh, rings on there. Oh, these are pre-baked. This is before I baked them. I don't know why I did that so now you know how they looked before we baked them <laughs> I'm a little confused yeah see you can see how they looked prior to baking them and how after you see you know when you see at the after effect you can't really tell that those were the same because the background the liquid clay uh, bakes up and is more translucent or the metallic looking comes out better. So anyway, here's a whole bunch of stuff I've made. Different kinds of bezels, different colors. 
some glitter in some, some seashells in some. That one turned out kind of fun. But I mean, see, there's some of my flat backs. <clears throat> kind of gives it a little extra bling bling. And this one I just did with the, the translucent, tran um, that was the one with the translucent turquoise. And then I put some bling bling in there. <laughs> How gorgeous, huh? This is just gorgeous. Yeah, I put some uh, resin in there. So I hope that this was a better video so that you could see a couple of different ways that you can do resin. Um, I'm sorry, uh, liquid clay, liquid polymer clay. So if you have any questions, shoot those down to me. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas that you'd like for me to make more videos in. Um, I would really, really love it if you'd share this video with your friends. And as always, please do some random acts of kindness. These days, it's really, really a wonderful thing that you can do. So take care, be creative, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.